All right, welcome back to another tournament replay. We had another National Launch League last Sunday in Darmstadt, Germany. This is the quarterfinal. On the left side you see Minsk versus Tamiyo on the right side. Quite an exotic matchup, I think. You see Tamiyo much more often, but Minsk is a bit of a forgotten commander. But Chris managed to go into top 8. And yeah, I think this is an interesting matchup. If you have a look at the deck list, he does not feature all the clunky Boon Weaver combo lines, but instead only going for Vivian and Birthing Pot, which is a good one in my opinion. Increases the amount of useful games you create with the other cards you can play instead. Here we have a quite a nice start. Temple Garden, Plains, into Voice of Resurgence. That's a very good card against Tamiyo, obviously. Mm. Torben, on the other hand, plays, I think, a, more or less a conservative Tamiyo version. We see various builds, control, affinity, tempo. We also had a tempo Tamiyo at the tournament. Uh, but yeah, this version is the most intuitive one, if you so will. Followed up by an Utopia Sprawl. I apologize for the lighting on the left side. It's suboptimal, but you can see all the cards on the right side to make sure you don't miss anything. <coughs> so we have a Force Spike for the Broadside Bombardier. That's a necessary interaction. The token enters <clears throat> no matter what. <coughs> so there's quite a nice board state on the left side versus Tamiyo. Quote unquote, just producing clue tokens so far. We see a breeding pool in hand. There is a repeal. Repeal is a nice spell to get rid of the token. There's also a Jace, Hull Breacher, and I'm not quite sure about the rest. Oh, there's a Stifle, for example. That might come in handy later on. Maybe if Minsk decides to start a combo, which is usually something you don't do against control because you're quite fragile de depending on the control deck and also depending on the situation here with the voice you could say okay if my opponent interacts at some point at least i get an elemental token and also you have to take into consideration that tamiyo is one of the few decks it's basically mono blue and mono blue only interacts on on stack otherwise they have to bounce back permanent and you can be sure that you can replay your cards at some point and there is a karmic guide seeking to reanimate the broadside bombardiers would be quite a crazy interaction here swinging with the bombardiers sacking the karmic guide dealing seven damage not too bad. There's a subtlety taking care of the karmic guide and another token is produced. So that's, that voice really came in handy trying to down tick Tamiyo. This Tamiyo print by the way is absolutely gorgeous it looks so beautiful I think it was even the texture foiling which doesn't make a lot of a lot of a difference on camera but in paper it looks a tiny bit nicer 
And here we see a Merc Tide and a Cryptic Command. So the hand looks quite good. Also an Ice Fang Quattle. This could be a nice blocker at some time to... If he manages to, to get three Snow Permanents, could be a nice blocker to get rid of Voice. But so far it has no Death Touch. <clears throat> and there are only four cards in Graveyard. He knows there is a Karmic Guide incoming, or there's the potential for an incoming Karmic Guide. So there's definitely no room to tap out for Merc Tide. But a double spell is even better, Minsk into Scavenging Ooze. And the Scavenging Ooze is some kind of a signal that he has to start playing his Merc Tide at some point. So now there is an Ice Fang Quaddle. I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it would have been better to play the Ice Fang Quaddle Sorcery Speed. Of course, that way you signalize that you might not have an interaction for the Karmic, bite, karmic Guide. On the other hand, I think it's quite crucial to hit those land drops. Definitely debatable. So here is another Tamiyo uptick. Against that board state, definitely a good ability to reduce damage by one for each creature. And we see the Cryptic Command being ready. To tap down the whole board. So there is another comic guide. Beautiful copy. OG. Foil old bordered. And we see a cryptic command countering the angel and tapping the whole board. The token comes first because the ability triggers first. So, also make sure that this one is tapped down. It doesn't make a big of a difference since it has some in sickness anyways, but that's fine. There is a fast lad being added. And now we have a Tamiyo ultimate. So there are Two, four, six, seven, plus cards in hand. He was just about to count 16 cards. So there are 83 cards left in the library. So he's about to draw 42. <clears throat> and that takes quite some time to structure. You have all the cards. You have to decide what you're going to do. And he decided to go for a Mystic Confluence and Confluence bouncing all the elemental tokens. But still, Chris is left with quite a few good creatures. Minsk is it's quite a nice, quite a nice deck. Even if you flood, you have all the mana to spend on your hamster or uh, any other creature. Just grow it bigger. And I think we are in such a situation right now. Yeah, the Halbridge is kind of useless in that particular matchup. Unless there's some skull clamp magic going on. For two mana. He's going to exile the creatures. Okay, why not? Grows the scavenging ooze. With all th those cards in hand, there could be an argument to also get rid of the other cards. But I think he's 
He has one, three green left. I think Utopia's all called red. It's his only red source. <clears throat> He's going to grow the hamster here. Going down to four. So, let's see if there's anything that he can bring up against that. <clears throat> we see a Leisure Shredder in hand, there's a Merc Tide, so he can bring down some creatures for sure. We saw Boomerang, Urza, <laughs> lots of cards. Quite cool to have a Tamiyo ulti here on camera. I hope you guys enjoy it too. So we start with a bird, another land, and a Merktide. Big Merktide enters with eight. And we have the Ledger Shredder trigger. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he can discard almost anything. There's so much stuff he's not going to make use of. Lorien Revealed, for example. Definitely drawn enough cards. So with the Boomerang, he can do some stuff. I don't know, he might have other bounce spells. Uh, here we go, he decides to Boomerang the Scoos. And with that, he's still not in a good spot because he can just uh, use the activated ability of Minsk to grow power and toughness of the other creatures. There is a Skull Clamp, there is a Boseju. So. <clears throat> yeah, he can change power and toughness of the hamster, and he can also change power and toughness of Lanova Elves, and then just swing in. We see a daze, which is not really rele relevant right now, because there are three power two creatures on board as well as Minsk so those are the blocks and then he would still go down to zero but he decides to go for the fun which is which is okay I mean yeah as I said <clears throat> there are no blocks that would save him so Despite drawing half your deck, this is decided for Minsk. Okay, second game. Tamiyo will be on the play, starting with a Hall of Storm Giants into Commander, obviously. But Minsk has also a nice response, a Chain Lightning turn one. It's pretty good. Here we have an island, and we see a play pattern that doesn't come up too often, at least these days. Back in the days it was much more popular. Um, there's a boomerang for your land drop. Tempo is more than ever again the most relevant resource. So here he decides to go for the fetch land instead. Probably searching for an elegant parlor end of turn or another survey land. And there is a Tamiyo recast, which is depending on the hand. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm not sure. I mean, at some point he needs to get down Tamiyo. <clears throat> Unfortunately for him, it seems that 
There is another interaction spell waiting to roast Tamiyo. And here we have, what is he going to search for? It's the elegant parlor. Okay, fair enough. So having some surveil business going on. We saw is it Vedakan Shekels? And there is a Murktite again, I think. And Oko also. So quite some good cards, but no green source so far. <coughs> 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 And there's a lightning bolt. That's pretty strong. And now I think he was thinking about whether or not Tamiyo would go to Graveyard to use it as a pitch for Murktide. But at the same time that would show the opponent, hey, I have my only Delve card in hand. <laughs> it was a very well-timed Night of Autumn dealing with the Shackles. Torben, on the other hand, was missing two land drops already, I think, which is quite unfortunate. There's a Sun Petal Grove on four mana. There could be anything, but we start with an attack. We see Melira. That's not too bad. It's actually not able to be part of the combo because you have to exile Melira in order to return another card. Mm, but it's, I think it's uh, for two mana, three, three, a card that brings back all your elementals, for example, is, is pretty good. And also mostly all other decks you, you play in your 99, uh, all other decks, I mean the cards. You play in your 99. So the hatch maze is going to pitch the force of negation. And luckily, there is a spell pierce waiting for the Aladamri skull. Otherwise, this could and quickly we see a birthing pot we see a delighted halfling i'm not quite sure but a birthing pot could cause some trouble together with felida guardian <clears throat> so that's actually the main combo uh, despite the interaction with vivian you have a Birthing Pot and Felida Guardian is a 1-4 for 4 mana. It flickers a non-land permanent or even permanent on ETB. Not entirely sure. So you flicker the pot, then you pot Felida again into Karmic Guide, bring back the, the cat, flicker pot again, bring back Kiki. Kiki makes a copy of Karmic. Karmic Guide will bring back the Felida Guardian and then you can make infinite one four tokens in combination with Kiki Jiki. And the same works with Vivian, just that Vivian doesn't cost you three additional mana and six life. You just flick a Vivian instead and you can do the same things, the same line. We have a Merktide, a big one again, 8-8. Eight, eight. There was a fourth Aeolingus. Now that's that's interesting. What's going to happen? Shackles are dealt with. There's a birthing pot. Can be problematic. He's not yet in a spot 
to go off if he would pot knight into Felidar Guardian. But still, there comes the hamster. Hamster time. No, makes no sense to attack. And here we have a cool interaction as a mystic sanctuary together with a mystic confluence in hand. So the confluence can definitely take care of several cards. Let's attack first. Having the monarch is a good thing as a control player. And there's the daze. Daze is also really nice. Good interaction with the sanctuary. It's quite a good draw. Although there's a lot of mana on the other side and it might not get to counter something. But let's see. There's also a birthing pot and we see a Minsk imbu in hand. Even the, the better hamster is ready to swing at you. Will be interesting. Let's see what Minsk is going for. Seems there is no additional land drop so far. Let's swing in. Going down to six. So this is about to become a race. If Birthing Pot resolves now, which is very unlikely, then he could go for the combo line. He decides to play the Birthing Pot without losing life. Because if the Birthing Pot does not resolve, he would go down to 7 and is immediately dead on the backswing. So, counter the pot. Bounce your token, the human knight, as well as Minsk and Boo. And there's another land in hand. We see the Savannah. So you can just replay Minsk. And there we have the days with the Mystic Sanctuary. And now that we have the Mystic Sanctuary with Merktide on board, we get to use the second trigger. Unfortunately, Torben missed the interaction. That would be lethal already. But I mean, already a few rounds played and it's easy to get into a tunnel vision with any deck. Long day lots of rounds and as i said the the triggered ability from from Merktide is more often than not not relevant at all would be cool to to see it here but makes it even more exciting chris gets another turn So we know there is a Minsk Imbu in hand. The Mystic Confluence went back on top due to the Sanctuary. So he knows he has to play around that. Only three damage on board. Minsk Imbu will probably never resolve. So he decides to attack first. Going down to three. And there is also a Malira in hand. And another fetch land we just saw. So he starts with a Minskambu. That's post combat, not too scary. At least with the current board state. 
If Chris decides to play the Malira, of course, there is a creature to sacrifice with three power. But other than that, the activated ability is more or less irrelevant. There is an Arbor Elf and an Arrow Mesa in hand. Yeah, and probably the, the, the line of play is trying to get through Melira and then trying to sacrifice Melira, but even if like there is a Mystic Confluence on hand and uh, Torben can just let the, the minus two go on stack and then he bounces all the creatures and there is nothing to sacrifice. So there's no way out for Chris here. But you have to play to your odds. That's what's happening. What's happening? And now I think they had a judge call for the exact ruling. The minus two of Minsk works as uh, same as Christ. Christ also has a minus two. And sacrificing a creature is part of the resolution of the spell or the ability. So in response, to make sure not to die against uh, Lightning Helix or anything else, there is a suspend, which means he has to sacrifice the Knight of Autumn to deal the most damage, but yeah. Hope to find something in the Demonic Tutor. And he decides to sacrifice Malira instead of letting it suspend. Dealing two damage with the Knight. The Herbstritterin, as it's called in, in German. So, five, one, looking at the draw from the Monarch. Surprise, there's nothing to do. Let's go over to game three. So, that was a close one. But in the end, it seemed like uh, Minsk lost a bit of, of steam <clears throat> to keep on pressuring the board. Starting with a fetch land, game three. And there's a Taiga, Kevin altered version, a beautiful foil black bordered. Looks great. And there's a delighted halfling. That's quite a good card against mono blue. We have a polluted delta, probably going for a tropical island, and a commander cast. Oh, it goes for a snow-covered island. Okay, why not? Maybe he has Tropical Island in hand. So, turn two, another fetch land. Searching for a white source probably savannah most likely if that's not in hand if you wonder why savannah has this blue border it's because that's how the image from moxfield looks like and yeah it seems like they the way i understood is that they scan in all the cards on moxfield or on scryfall and Moxfield is using the, the Scryfall database. So, yeah, I have no idea where there's a blue border, but it's an, it's an FBB Savannah. Minsk and Boo, turn two. <coughs> Already five power on board. It's, it's quite good. 
There's a Grove of the Burn Willows. Beautiful cards. And there's a Dumri. That's a legendary spell. Unfortunately, Delighted Halfling is not limited to legendary creatures, but spells. And here is a bit of a blunder. I think they had a short pause in between. And Torben was going into the think tank, not realizing that, well, it's a legendary spell. So the Flare of Denial doesn't do anything. And since Domri resolves, it will be very, very difficult for Torben to do anything else. And here is a stern scolding when he realizes, well, wait, Domri gives uncounterable to all the creature spells you play this turn. So that's quite an unfortunate setup for the mono blue player. Swinging in for four. He can bounce Minsk, reduce the damage to two. Actually six, because uh, Domri also boosts the board. Going down to 17. <clears throat> Yeah, and this is tricky. I probably forgot to distract the life here. So it should be eighteen sixteen actually. There's a breeding pool going down to fourteen. Now the fetch is taken into account. And there is a whiff draw. That's quite a good one. There's also a subtle teeth, if I'm not mistaken. A windswept heave. We know about the stern scolding that's currently Completely useless, unfortunately. There's a Harbinger of the Seas. That's a good card. He just has to make sure to get it down. Fauna Shaman activation. Fintorn can find many things. Can find all the creatures in your deck. And if all your creatures are uncounterable, you are probably going to venture into the dungeon with a white plume adventurer. And that's what he is going to do. Not tapping. Okay. There's a sink into stupor. That does not counter, it does return the spell, that's good. It just stalls the game. As long as he can't get back control of the board. It's not really useful, unfortunately. Fourth land. Withdraw could do some stuff. Could currently bounce two creatures. But as I said, as long as he can't get rid of the Domri, life is very, very tough for the mono blue player. <clears throat> and there is a subtlety, we see that. Maybe, maybe there's an edge. Maybe there's a situation in which he will try to resolve White Plume next turn again. You can subtlety it. Maybe he will put it back on top. And then you can block a delighted halfling, a hamster, swing back on Domri, but Domri is still not dead. And he decides to withdraw the two creatures, which is definitely also something to to do. Maybe he also thinks about, well, I can just crack the clue and get rid of the Stern Scolding, which is pretty useless right now. We see White Plume again. 
going into the dungeon. Hitting the danger zone. There's a beautiful forest that I always think of as a snow-covered forest because the landscape is looking like that. Beautiful arena forest. We have another delighted halfling which still can't be countered and we have a fauna shaman which also can't be countered. So he can just refill the board, attack for two with the hamster. Correct a clue and there needs to be an option. I think it was a Lorien revealed which doesn't seal the deal. There's the force now and this might be the concession because yeah, there's simply not much to do. Harbinger comes too late and at that point Chris wins the game. Yeah, cool matchup. Lots of things happening here. Thanks for tuning in and see you on the next one, which will be failure against Azusa. Also quite an exotic one. See you over there.